As we went on to explore the Zion Canyon in the year of 2281, we will discover who inhabits its lands now. The different tribes who have their own unique cultures, blissfully unaware of how the outside world works, believing the rumors of New Vegas to be almost like a vision of the future, with technology most of them can't comprehend. On top of that, we would also go on to meet two characters who did live on the outside and moved into the area for safety. These characters would be Joshua Graham and Daniel, two Mormons who were on the run from Joshua's terrifying past. As Kaisar's legion had fully equipped the tribe known as the White Legs and were told to wipe out anyone in their way, causing a war between all the factions within Zion. Whilst exploring this region, however, stories would be told about a man, or more, a spirit that was said to have influenced the area of the Sorrows and housed himself within caves all over the land. This man was said to be called the Father in the Cave, and many of the tribes would be fearful of upsetting this spirit. As the courier would look into this spirit, they would discover this man was actually known as Randall Clark, who had found himself within the Zion Canyon before and after the Great War, desperately trying to look out for himself as well as some others within the area. Noting down all of these experiences, Randall would become a legend with both the names of the father in the cave as well as the survivalist. But what is Randall's story? Why was he such an important figure within this part of the world? What happened to him during and after the Great War? And what was his ultimate fate. Well in today's video we explore the legend that is the father in the cave and ultimately the tragic story of the lone survivalist known as Randall Clark. Randall Clark was born in the year of 2053, two decades before the Great War that would see the world get ripped to shreds. As Randall reached adulthood, the world was getting more and more hostile and most likely conscription became a thing all over. Due to this, Randall would go on to serve within the United States Army, with his deployment being within the recently annexed Canada. As war got worse and battles got more frequent, Randall would go on to witness multiple acts of atrocity, with a lot of them having been said to be under the name of the American people and for the greater good. Seeing all of this taking place, Randall would be horrified and sickened by these criminal actions taking place. Randall was also known for going on camping trips and learning skills out within the wild forest where he lived during this same time. Frequently, he would venture outside of Salt Lake City and head into the wilderness for days on end, frustrating his wife Charlotte and son Alex, who would not know where he was. These trips did help Randall to become well versed in survivability as he would go on to pride himself in his survival skills and his independence. During one of these long trips Randall went on, he would start heading home along the scenic route of the 77. The date was the 23rd of October, 2077. Almost an hour away from his home, Randall would be excited to see his family again. However, on that home stretch, the Great War had begun. Traveling in his truck, the vehicle would come to a sudden halt, as did the other vehicle in the next lane. Randall knew something had happened and immediately came to the conclusion that they'd been hit by an EMP. With this in mind, Randall fully coated himself in protective gear in preparation for whatever was next. A few minutes later, multiple warheads flew over the skies and headed to the city. It didn't take long for the whole city to be wiped out by the bombardment, which lasted just seven minutes. And as this took place, Randall could only just sit and watch as he counted at least 13 separate nuclear missile detonations. With his training now kicking in, Randall grabbed his pack and rifle, Mercy killing the elderly couple in the car next to him as they had lost all of their vision due to the flash of explosions and started to head back to the Zion Canyon, knowing full well he could not save his wife and son who must have been taken out by the nuclear bombs. Five days passed as Randall trekked out and finally he made it back to the canyon and immediately took shelter in the Fallen Rock Cave. Luckily for Randall, this cave near the back had a large supply of United States Geological Survey equipment as well as a natural spring which would help him survive these terrifying, horrific first few days. At first, Randall had escaped the worst of the event that was seen to many as the end of the world. He had resources to live off of, he was in a secure location, and he had his survival skills he had learned over the many years. However, after a couple of days of recouping, the area would see the fall of black rain on the 31st of October. This rain was so heavily radiated that it was deadly to venture out or even be near for long. As this rain coated the land, Randall realized he was stuck inside the cave and could not venture out 
out at all, or he would surely be killed. By November 2nd, the rain still fell, and the radiation got so bad in the area that Randall couldn't go within 15 feet of the entrance of the cave without his Geiger counter detecting lethal levels of radiation. Randall had no real choice. He had to remain deep inside the cave with two options at hand. He would either wait until his water ran out or the radiation went away, allowing him to continue on and look outside for any form of life and other resources. Sadly, Randall would not be in for a good time as the year was now 2078 and his situation had not changed at all. The radiation was still at lethal levels, which went against what he had been told when serving in the army, who stated the radiation levels would die down after two to four weeks. It had now been almost four months and he was still stuck. After this amount of time, Randall's water had become extremely low and pretty much run out. Because of this, Randall had to adapt and took to mopping condensation off of the cave walls and wringing out into his bottles. Some good news was there for him to hold on to, however, as Randall's food supplies from the USGS was still holding up well, probably due to how Randall knew how to ration food well thanks to his survival skills once again. But even with this small bit of hope, Randall was on his own. It became clear to him that he may never see his family ever again, or even any humans again. He was on his own completely. With this one thought passed over his mind and that was he would happily brave the radiation in a hope that he could get to his family just to see them one last time. As if the world had heard his cries, on the 8th of January 2078, a massive windstorm ripped through the canyons, lasting two whole days. Whilst this at first looked like more bad news, this windstorm actually was able to clear out the radioactive fallout, dropping the radiation exposure level by 500 rads by the 10th of January. After five more days, Randall decided it was finally time to see if he could go outside. Peeking his head out, he noticed it was snowing. But this wasn't regular snow. This snow was glowing green. This sight was unlike anything he had seen and it was beautiful. However, the radiation was still too high for him to venture out. It was only on the 28th of January when he was able to finally venture out due to the radiation being low enough to survive outside. Despite it being lower than before, Randall still had to take radiation drugs to make sure he didn't collapse and let the radiation that was still around kill him. With the water now somewhat drinkable again thanks to the drugs, things were looking up for Randall. However, he was still still on his own. There was no one, and as he stared out of his cave once again, he realized that the world was empty. Maybe this was it. He was the only survivor remaining. Many months had passed since the horrors of the Great War and Randall Clark quickly realised that if he was to continue on living, he had to move out and try and get a sense of his surroundings and also hunt for more resources to continue surviving. The radiation levels luckily were low enough now that he was able to slowly and carefully venture forth into the canyon, setting up camps at both the Fallen Rock and Two Skies Caves before heading further into the canyon itself. The year was now 2083, five years from when the radiation had first First started to die down and now Randall had set himself up in these two caves and expanded his resources. His food was luckily holding out with still plenty to keep him going for a good while but on top of this he was also able to find fresh fruit which he would now add to his diet. This was all thanks to the fact that despite all of the odds nature had relatively survived the nuclear holocaust and continued to live on recovering all throughout the lands. This enabled Randall to gather resources and with his survivalist nature nature, was able to identify a long list of surviving plants that now had harmless nodules and mutations which were caused by the radiation that littered the lands for a good while. Knowing full well that if he took all of the fruit that the plants gave, they would just wither and die, Randall was smart and only took what he needed, allowing them to continue to expand and grow out more. But not only had the plant life survived, but so too had the wildlife. By the 7th of May of that same year, Randall would also go on to discover clouds of stinging flies, a new type of species in one of the canyons, his first sight of life outside of plants. With these flies was also a much bigger mutated dragonfly creature who would go on to feast on them. Randall, amazed at what he had been witnessing, noted down all of these discoveries as he saw the power of life on this planet and despite everything it had been hit with, it continued to live on. But things got even bigger for Randall on the 19th of May as he went on to discover a big horn of family, a ram, ewe, and a single lamb. This was a revelation to Randall. 
Not only had plant life survived, not only had insects survived, but bigger farm animals had also survived. Life had continued on and was continuing the cycle of life by raising new families. With all of this knowledge now right in front of him, Randall now had activities he could do to keep him busy in this new destroyed world. He could now monitor the wildlife and add animal husbandry to that said list. But monitoring all of these animals, Randall came to a conclusion. Whilst this was a life-changing moment, it was finally time to venture home and maybe, just maybe his family had survived like the wildlife that had within the canyon. Randall started preparing for his trip back home, collecting all his resources and making sure he was fully prepared for the journey. That following year on the 10th of April, Randall finally departed the canyon and reached Salt Lake City after just 15 days of dodging radiation pockets as well as foraging any plant life he saw on the route. Whilst he was extremely hopeful that maybe his family had survived, what he really wanted to do was give them a proper burial for if they had been killed in the blasts, which was more than likely. As he got nearer to the location, Randall quickly came to the realization that sadly there was no chance that he would be able to find their bodies or even his home. The huge craters and destroyed skyscrapers proved that it would be too difficult, and whilst he had good intentions, he had to just accept defeat and head to his new home which was now in the Zion Canyon. Randall started heading home, once again scavenging what he could along the way, noticing human tracks along the way, but made sure he stayed clear of where they were heading. But something had now changed with Randall. He was now filled with self-hate. He regretted his life choices and hated that he went out scavenging that day the bombs hit. He shouldn't have been out there that day. He should have been home with his wife and son and died in their house like they did. Instead, he lived on and never got to say goodbye to either of them before they were obliterated in their own home in Salt Lake City. Randall hated himself so much during this time, he considered going back and making sure he found his house to die there instead of living in solitude in the Zion Canyon. But in the end, Randall decided against it and stayed within his camps in the canyon. Eleven years went on with Randall living on his own once again, living off of the land, until suddenly human life found him once again. As he stayed within his camp, a large group of 28 Spanish-speaking humans, including 11 men, 8 women, and nine children found themselves within the canyon looking for a safe place to live. Randall saw this group and watched them from a distance, making sure they did not see him in case they became hostile and also because he didn't speak Spanish. Randall kept an eye on them at all times and somewhat became their guardian angel. This was all shown in November when one of the men from the group broke his leg while hunting the bighorners. Randall alerted the group to his location and without revealing himself, left them a bottle of antibiotics to fight off the infection. By the 15th, 15th of November, the man survived the infection and Randall was to thank for saving his life. But as the group had not seen him hand over the antibiotics to help the man, the group were going to see this event as divine intervention. Randall knew the truth of what happened, but was glad that the man was back on his feet and he played a part in saving his life. As the group continued on, so did Randall, who continued to watch over them, making sure their life in the canyon was one of peace and security. All seemed well as they all went into the winter with Randall moving into the Stone Bones cave to continue watching the Mexicans live. Life was going well for all of them. However, right around the corner, a new group of individuals escaping their own horror would find the group and Randall Clark would witness a new horror that would change his mindset going forward. Over in New California were multiple vaults housing some of the survivors of the Great War, with a lot of them conducting their own experiments. One of these vaults was Vault 22, whose aim was to study wildlife and conduct experiments on it. However, things would go terribly, terribly wrong during this time, as all of the plant life and population were infected by a vicious fungus that would turn those infected into aggressive carriers, looking to spread the infection further. This caused the surviving residents to flee the vault, venture out into the waste and look for a new place to call their home. This saw the Vault 22 dwellers venture forth into the Zion Canyon. This group was heavily armed with tons of supplies and on top of that had over 100 men and women who were well trained and had a strong sense of discipline. Approaching the Mexican survivors, it was clear that the few men, women and children posed no threat to the Vault 22 survivors. However, this didn't hold them back as the Vault survivors went on to kill all of the Mexican men as well as any women and children who refused to work 
work with them, with those who did survive this horrible act being taken back to their main camp and were penned in like livestock. Randall was horrified by what he had seen and immediately wanted to hit back to help the Mexican survivors who were caged away. But the vault survivors were far too powerful for him to take on doing regular patrols, setting up sentry towers and heavily armed camps. Randall did notice on his two day surveying that a lot of the vault survivors had nasty coughs, but he brushed that off as his focus was just on how he could hit back and save the Mexican women and children. Seeing that the vault survivors would kill and eat the Mexican Mexican survivors when they wanted, something changed Randall's mindset as he sought to take out the vault survivors any way he could. Here he would use guerrilla tactics to take out these horrible individuals, ambushing them with his rifle and explosives, and booby trapping weapons and bodies he could not take to wipe out more of them without them knowing of his presence. By the end of February of that year, Randall had taken out 24 of the vault survivors and only suffered one wound. Whilst all of his attacks would go unseen, he would have to move his camp to Hueve Harache, as a patrol almost discovered his camp before Randall would be able to take them out. After 10 months of small attacks by Randall, he would finally be victorious as they had lost over 80% of their members due to these attacks as well as the sickness carried from when they were in the vault. With the lack of troops to continue on, the remaining vault survivors would flee the canyon and finally Randall could go back to living the way he wanted. But he was not celebrating and in fact was still hoping for more vengeance. Four days after the group had left, Randall would go on to find a rogue member of the vault group who had caught herself in one of his bear traps by accident. Randall found this individual named Sylvie and rescued her, nursing her back to health. Sylvie confirmed what Randall had thought during his war of attrition, that the vault 22 survivors were indeed suffering from sickness, but luckily she was fine. These two would continue to form a close relationship as Randall taught her about life outside of the vault, in which Sylvie really wanted to learn. For three years, these two became one, but in the year of 2100, Randall was to become scared of some new news he would receive. Sylvie was pregnant. Randall was to become a father again at the age of 47 years old. He was reminded of how he failed before as a father and didn't want the same to happen again, but he also did not want to let Sylvie down and with that traveled to Tocqueville to make sure he had the right supplies for when that day came. This time he was going to get it right. But sadly, despite preparing for nine months, when the day came for their child's birth, Randall would go on to lose both in the process, with multiple complications happening leading to Randall being without his second wife and second child. Randall would go on to bury his second family south of the Zion Narrows, and unlike his first family, Randall could be with them this time as he said his final goodbyes. Randall at this point in time had reached a new low as he ventured back to his cave to finally give up on life. Trying to commit suicide, Randall chose not to in the end as he went on to move into the Morning Glory Cave to continue on. With these recent events happening, Randall went on to believe that he he was losing his sanity. This was emphasized in 2108 when he witnessed for the first time a roaming pack of feral ghouls, thinking that he had honestly lost his mind. Thinking this over, Randall quickly came to his senses as the ghouls charged at him growling as he would go on to put them out of their misery. But this event made him say to himself that he wished he could put himself out of his own misery as easily as he did with the ghouls. As the years went on, Randall would go on to turn 70 years old, still surviving out within the canyon, showing just how good of a survivalist he really was. In the year 2123, Randall would go on to find a new group had entered the canyon and find themselves setting up on the old Mexican camp from back in the day. This group would be 24 children who had found their way into the Zion Canyon who appeared to be on their own. Like he did with the Mexicans, Randall would watch them from the shadows, listening to their conversations as they spoke a new broken version of English, telling each other's stories and having a laugh. Listening in on them, Randall worked out that they had escaped from a place called The School and feared a man they only named as the principal. Like with the Mexicans, Randall wanted to protect these children at all costs and began thinking of ways he could possibly put his skills to use, threatening to kill the principal if he ever saw him. From the shadows once again, Randall would go on to leave them gifts at all times, these being storybooks, weapon manuals, medical books, and other practical items, as 
well as notes telling them to read, learn, and settle into Zion. Throughout his time watching over them, Randall would make sure he always looked after them, and made sure they were always rewarded if they followed his rules and guidance. Those being things like being kind to each other, be modest, but also strike out against those who try to hurt them with anger. Because of all these notes and gifts being given to the children, Randall would become a legend to them, being seen as the father, a mythical figure who would care for them always. But with all this set in stone, the year was 2124, and Randall knew his time in this harsh world was coming to an end. He was dying of lung cancer, causing him to have a horrid cough, shortness of breath, as well as blood within his spit. With this knowledge, Randall went on to give over pretty much all of his possessions to the children, as well as one last note, which read, while the father would be silent from here on out, he would always be out there to watch over and protect them. Whilst Randall knew there was no way he could actually do anything he said in the note, he just wanted the children to know that out there, they were cared for, and he always wanted to do what was right. Eventually, Randall went on to move to the Red Gate, a place he knew the children could not get to to find him, and when there, would breathe his last breath. Packing his bag with his trusty rifle, Randall Clark would lie under the stars and record his thoughts. In this record, Randall would come to the realization that what kept him going on in life was his memories. His family might not have been able to survive the Great War, but he did, and their only life was in his memories of them. If he ended it early, their presence would be gone forever. The memory of his loving family drove him on, kept him going on throughout the many years within the canyon, and kept him ultimately alive. His final thought was of the innocence that had been brought back to the Zion Canyon through the children from the school, and knowing that the canyon was in their hands, Randall could finally move on. In January 2124, Randall finally closed his eyes for the final time in the Red Gate, with his final words being, Goodbye Zion. Whilst Randall's life was filled with horrifying events that destroyed him throughout the years, his good intentions helped him to go on to be the spirit of the Zion Canyon. Without Randall's presence, this area of the world could have been filled with bad intentions and people who abused the land as well as others. But now, it has maintained that innocence with its tribes looking after one another, being modest, but also not hesitating at hitting back at those that threatened him. His legacy will forever go on within this region, as his teachings have passed on throughout the generations. And albeit he was just an ordinary man known as Randall Clark, within the Zion Canyon, he will forever be known as the father in the cave, always looking over the inhabitants who live there. And that is the tragic tale of Randall Clark, the father in the cave from the Honest Arts DLC. Did you find all of the bits of info about Randall, or did you not even know about this character at all? Do let me know. Also let me know what you thought of his story, because I personally thought it was brilliant. Just as good as Joshua Graham's story, quite honestly. If you enjoyed this video, then please do leave a like, leave a nice comment, check out my other lore videos, and subscribe if you haven't already. Do let me know what else you'd like to see me cover, and if you really really loved this video then you can support me on Patreon or as a YouTube channel member for early access to my latest videos completely ad free and bonus community stuff as well. And speaking of I'd like to thank my supporters real quick. Big thanks to our small fish guys, our big fishes Christopher, AVP man, last persona user and Arto Krem, our shark well such gaming, our huge megalodon Sinus Jacob Garcia and our absolutely legendary sarfish Shadow SGT. Also big shout out to our YouTube channel members, our wise ones jambu and fiery italian all your support means the world to me and means i can make these videos for you guys so thank you all so so much but that is all for now thanks so much again for watching and i shall see you all in the next one cheers